It was the best of times. It was the worst of times for Starlight Glimmer. <laughs> it was mostly the worst of times. That's pretty much what I meant. Ah, Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts. Ouch. Bad kitty. Good kitty. Ouch. Watch her feet next time. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. <laughs> And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 21. Every little thing she does is magic. Come on, I sang on the last one. How could I not sing when it's an actual song title? <laughs> but just to clarify, it's actually every little thing she does. They left off the magic, but yeah. it was implied. Heavily implied. And if they just said is magic, it would have given it away too much. Also, probably copyright issues. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how they had to change Twilight's name from just Twilight to Twilight Sparkle. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you wonderful set of books. Let's not discuss those. We're here to talk about My Little Pony. <laughs> and poor Starlight Glimmer, who tries to solve every problem she has with magic. And keeps seeming to not really learn that magic can't fix everything. You can't always go with your strong suit. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Though I do love how we've slowed down a bit on the, she's now good, because she's still thinking about, okay, how can I solve my problem? Oh, I know. I can mind control everyone. Is there a law for that in Equestria? There should be. <laughs> there really should, and I would say what were all those books doing in Twilight's library, but judging by the magic color, it's not technically dark magic. And so the spells individually by themselves may actually have positive uses. Also, I'm guessing that princesses are law. So if Twilight judges it not to be illegal, she doesn't get charged. Because <laughs> I haven't seen an actual police officer except for maybe in Manhattan? Mostly Manhattan. So I'm guessing all policing is done by the princesses when available. And considering there's only four of them... Yeah, no wonder so much stuff goes wrong. <laughs> oh, but on to stuff about the actual episode other than poor Starlight Glimmer. I'm actually warming up to her. I like her as a character. I liked her as a villain, but they had to warm her up to start to start getting into the stride of being a good good guy character who was once evil. Yeah, I like that the Reformation is coming slowly and that she's having issues and that they're interrelated issues. I also love, speaking of her 180, I also love the fact that it was her choice to become good. Yeah, she didn't get hit with the elements of Harmony or Rainbow Powered Mane. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the only reason we got that quick 180 at the end of last season is because it was a season wrap up, so they had to do the whole big parade thing. Mm -hmm. Now that they've had this entire season, they are slowing her down so we can really get the transformation of her into an actual good person who does good things on her own volition. Yes, well that's the thing, is you can say the 180 and have the celebration, because you can make a declaration, but then you have to live up to it. And she didn't quite live up to it here, except for that great apology, though I'm not quite sure I would have accepted it as quickly as they did in the episode, but I understand 22 minutes... Yeah, 22 minutes. Thank you, Pinkie Pie, for beating a holdout on the apology. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also love how everyone was like it was a hangover. That was great. Yes, and the fact that Rarity said Fluttershy was too loud. Mm-hmm. Rarity apparently got very hard hit. <laughs> Sunglasses, hat. Please be quiet, Fluttershy. What? If you're wondering why it took me so long to make a sound effect there, I started doing a facial expression, and I realized I'm on radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, a recorded podcast broadcast on YouTube, but that's just semantics. Yeah, the thing is, we're not on film, not going to be on film. Have fun looking at the avatars. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It also reminds me, it's not too long till the season finale. We have episode 23 and 24 before 25 and 26 are the season finale. Your math is kind of weird because this is episode 21. So wouldn't it be... 22, 23, 24. 
Sorry. Well, at least you said it and I corrected myself. You hear the internet? I corrected myself. <laughs> uh, you're still going to get somebody in the comments saying you said it wrong. <laughs> just kidding. You guys have been really nice to us. I was just going to say the only person who would say that would be you. <laughs> you're the one who lets me record with you. <laughs> You do the editing, I could technically disappear. You could edit me out. Yeah, but it would be a really awkward one-sided conversation. So what did you think? Oh, I thought... <laughs> uh, so, your points? Uh, it was a nice touch that in Twilight's room, we had the equal sign with the x oh, yeah. stamp on it. And there was a photo of Trixie? Mm-hmm. So, those were both nice. Also nice that we're consistently seeing that Spike is dialing into how Starlight feels and is actually quite observant in that fact. I also feel sorry for Spike having to deal with two crazy unicorns. Yeah, especially when he goes, and I thought Twilight had the lock on freakouts. Uh, I still think Twilight still beats her because of Lesson Zero. Yeah, but Lesson Zero's magic use? Falls perilously close to what Starlight did. Hi, girls! <laughs> I need an adult. I am an adult! I need a different adult. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, and... It was interesting that the things that Starlight was afraid about with the friendship lessons wasn't friendship. It was the fact that none of it was magic, therefore she might not be good at it. As they pointed out repeatedly towards the end of the episode, you really missed the point. Mm -hmm. The point was to spend time together and do things that the other ponies find interesting. So you can become better friends with them by getting to know them through what they like to do. Yes, and you may learn something in the process. Whether it's truly about the task or just about the person, you're still learning, it's still an experience. And I, in the beginning, thought we were going to go for a whole too many Pinkie Pies thing again, with her showing off that duplication spell combined with the acceleration spell. Mm -hmm. So I figured that's why she was trying to split everybody up into different rooms, so that once they were all separated, she could do the spell split into five and spend time with all of them at the same time. And I love the reactions. I don't know if reactions is the right word. Everyone's behavior when they were spelled out of their minds. Yeah, that was cool. But I also liked when they were spelled out of their minds, how Applejack's family events seemed to be all references to movies. Pretty much movies slash books, but the movies were based on books, so mm -hmm. mostly movies. The only two I really recognized was Spider-Man and Predator. That's the one I find odd. Predator. <laughs> this is from the writing staff that brought us 28 pranks later. Are you really that surprised? Uh, good point, good point. Yeah, I recognized most of the clips. I just don't watch a lot of movies, so I couldn't have matched them to the correct movies. Yeah, I recognize the best of times and worst of times, but I didn't have any name to connect it to. I just know it was from a uh, mostly famous story. Yeah, it's a Dickinson book. Ah. And also staying on Applejack, I liked how there was such a delay in the command that Starlight gave. It was really like, how do I shorten this story? <laughs> And Granny Smith realized that you couldn't teach a pig the backstroke. I would actually like to hear that whole story because I want to know how we get from searching for a pie plate to trying to teach a pig to swim. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just... How did you... Point A and point B have nothing to do with each other. What is this, a game of telephone? Quite possibly. Also, a little bit of character building for Goldie. So not only is she a hoarder and a crazy cat lady, she's also a terrible gossip. <laughs> uh. And I don't know if that saying about Goldie is actually from anything. I'm just used to seeing it on t-shirts and catalogs. Ah, uh, yeah, this is one I couldn't quite identify as being related to a movie. Yeah, if you don't have anything nice to say, come sit by me. Ah, uh, gossiper credo. It also sounds like it's being put on one of those cards you find at the store in the racks next to the checkout line. Pretty much. And then I love how 
literally everything was taken, which points out the importance of articulating clearly. Reminded me of a grade school assignment where we had to tell our teachers how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Extremely difficult. First you have to... No, wait, that doesn't work. Then... No. <laughs> Yeah, and we were adapting it on the fly as we listened to other students do it. So we were like, dip, scoop, spread on one flat white portion of the bread. Because mm -hmm. she was doing everything wrong that she possibly could. You know, take too much, too little, hold the knife wrong. And I just remembered something I wanted to say about Applejack as well. Once again, I would like to know how long a moon is. Is it once a month, once a year? How long is a moon? Because 80 moons, they react like it's a really long time. But it's it can be a really long time, depending on how you measure a moon. Do you mean just a cycle? Do you mean what? <laughs> yeah, because we also have Spike joking that he and Twilight are going to be gone for 20 moons. And she's like, no, it's not going to be lo that long. We're going to be back tonight. He's like, yeah, right. So... Really, we need a definition here. And also, staying on the everything's too literal. Because I knew Pinkie Pie was just going to keep making everything in the book. Saw that coming. Did not see Rarity making a drawing of the dress. Yep. And I love how so I had to pause and go, make a larger dress. And then the little mouse is there going, but you were working on my dress. <laughs> also... There has been so much creepy fan art of Fluttershy with all the bugs all over her. This is why I don't go to Equestria Daily. That actually, it wasn't on Equestria Daily. I, I just went to my DeviantArt page because I follow a brony thing where I submit my art. And there was so much art of a humanized version of Fluttershy, ponyized version of Fluttershy. They did a lot of creepy drawings. Like, I know we're getting close to October and that works for that, but Jesus criminy! <laughs> Oh, I thought you meant the other kind of creepy. Oh? Fan art. Oh, you mean the kind that usually has... I, uh, no, not the kind of fan art. Mostly just creepy fan art of her going, I got all the animals. Being completely covered in bugs with a dark background, kind of grayed out, more like something you would see in Nightmare Before Christmas. Which is perfect. It's almost October. Yeah, but it still creeped me out. I'll show you some pictures later. Heard that before. <laughs> uh, and the whole there's no place to chillax I'm sorry I know Rainbow Dash has very specific criteria but you can chillax almost anywhere because all is chilling and relaxing which are kind of redundant in and of themselves but yes but it's like one of those hyper 90 words because mm -hmm. ah, I can chillax pretty much anywhere it's kind of like being the Boy Scout I was, I learned to fall asleep on any surface. Very cat-like at times. Yeah, it may not be the most comfortable thing, and you may wake up a little sore, but yeah, I can pretty much fall asleep anywhere. Oh, I was going to say there's more on literal, but we already covered Fluttershy getting all the animals and letting the animals run off because Starlight didn't tell her to make them stay. I feel sorry for the animals, too. Mm-hmm. That ain't our Fluttershy! <laughs> really isn't. Oh. And then there's the classic everything builds up. There's a fire! Rain clouds! Really? Flooding in. Okay, I can still fix this. I can still fix this. And in walks the authority figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, can anything else go wrong? I'm like, you had to finish that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the moment she said that sentence, something was either going to explode, something happened, or... Twilight was going to walk in. I pretty much figured on Twilight because they already gave us the hint that she will be back tonight. So everything that Starlight does wrong will show up in the middle of this. I also love how Twilight wasn't angry at her. She was just extremely disappointed. Like, you were doing so well. Kind of like that episode with the secrets. Yeah. But you were doing so well. <laughs> and we have to go back to the very beginning of the episode because we started basically with magic fights. And we kind of glossed over that. Oh, yeah. That and was pretty cool. I want to know how on earth do they both know to teleport to the same place? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because they, they also, when they were teleporting, they got to the area and 
knew the area before they got there because Starlight was already glowing when she teleported in. Yeah, so that she wouldn't fall. So she had to know she was going to wind up in the air in order for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Though there was a different reaction when they teleported underwater because Twilight held her breath the instant after she got in the water. And what it would have been a nice visual touch when they teleported out there is a little bit of water falling off of them. Mm -hmm. Or even just kind of falling from around them. Because how precise is the teleportation? Are you teleporting just your own molecules or are you bringing anything with you yeah do you get any of the surrounding air water etc the grass under your hooves you know even if it's just a few molecules because mm -hmm. when you're underwater you're completely wet and they were completely dry where they teleported which would imply that absolutely nothing comes with you which is incredibly powerful because the water molecules have already bonded to the fur Mm -hmm. So it might be like how um, teleportation in Star Trek works. The buffer knows your DNA and structure, and that's how it keeps you intact when it teleports you. Yeah. And then shield spells. Really? You guys are going to try to blast each other apart in the library? <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't there be like a battle arena for this? How does Twilight allow this? I know, because when the first time I watched it, my internal little voice from the Reader of Dye series went, My book! <laughs> also, I think Starlight Glimmer's shield was actually a reference to Captain America's shield, even though it had Twilight's uh, magic symbol on it, which I think is just a default symbol for magic, which you can probably find in a lot of books on magic, which is why it's on Twilight's butt. Yes, the magic of friendship. What I was going to say is I know it was a Captain America thing, but because of the coloration, it also kind of made me think of Steven's shield. Oh, good point. I don't know if Wonder Woman ever had a shield, but it looked like a shield she would have. I don't remember her ever having a shield. But... Yeah, because of those gauntlets she has. Mm -hmm. And then the nice crystal shield that she had where she was basically encapsulated in a gemstone. Mm -hmm. And then she blew everything away, and I'm surprised the books were actually intact. Well, the story only required the books to be knocked over. The story didn't require the books to be destroyed. Also, maybe Twilight preps the room beforehand. So everything in there is actually shielded in some way that when it would have received damage, it doesn't? Entirely possible because she's an incredibly powerful unicorn. And really, transforming things into other things, yeah, it's neat, but really you transform it into a bird's nest and a bird hatches? That implies that you are creating life. I was just about to talk about that. Because <laughs> every time I see someone transfigure something from either an inanimate into an adamant or an animate into an inanimate especially when it's an animal to something that's not animate i'm like you could reverse that right and they'll be okay right you just, if you can't you just killed something that was murder though this is the complete different of that but still yeah it's very disturbing you couldn't you do slightly more alchemic type transformations you know like lead into gold <laughs> instead of these outrageous okay we're going to take I'm not even going to try to match them up right. Candlestick, hat, bird's nest, quill set, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just, jeez. So any more points you want to go over? Uh, no, we've kind of touched on everything, even if we didn't nitpick it down to full detail, which, as you guys know, means that I thought the episode was pretty decent. So final thoughts? Nice to see Starlight continuing to make progress. It doesn't look like progress because she's still reverting back to her old patterns, but she's reverting back to them under stress. Which is the simple solution for her. Which is what you usually do when you're under stress anyways. You go back to the something that's easy that your brain automatically knows how to do. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the reasons martial arts is trained so much. Yes. And so she's having to break a very difficult habit and we're showing that, you know, in this whole whacked out use of magic but we're also showing something very relatable of i was afraid because what if i didn't do these things right what would everybody else think which is a self-image thing which everybody pretty much goes through overall i actually liked the episode especially on a second viewing when i started to notice more of what was going on and i really enjoyed the episode once it actually got going into the more comedy aspects of the mind control stuff that was going on I kind of went ooh during the whole initial part 
And then once everything got set up and the comedy started happening, I felt that section a little bit better. So overall, I enjoyed the episode. Definitely can't wait for more because things are probably going to get interesting. And no, I haven't read any spoilers. I'm just guessing based on the pattern of how the series works. <laughs> ah, well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic. Season 6, Episode 21, Every Little Thing She Does. Now, hopefully we don't have to use Mind Control to get you to subscribe. Click that link, please. Also, there's another link, a link that's very important to me. I would like to have some, a little bit of money here to help fund this project and other art projects I'm doing. So please, visit my Patreon and maybe toss me a couple of dollars a month. Or, if you just want, toss me a dollar this month and cancel next month. I won't have any problems with that. Any amount of money would be nice. Thank you.